mean, that that is very, very clear. I think I think the former president's people have been pretty clear about that. Um, but DeSantis, DeSantis is going to have to figure out a way to um, make himself distinctive and not just be Trump light, as Nikki Haley um, uh, said during one of her stops. Right. And if you look at our poll, I just want to show right now Republican voters do keep Trump and DeSantis at the top of the pack. Who are you open to voting for? Would support or consider supporting? Trump 85, Trump 84 percent, DeSantis 85 percent. You see the others who are that six and 10 or less there. Here's the question. If DeSantis is going to daily now repeatedly attack Trump in the conservative ecosphere, watch that number. Does that number? This is so funny. Like they're literally trying to do the electability Joining argument for DeSantis, dude. That's so sick. The problem is the Republican eco, uh, the Republican media ecosystem is not the same as like MSNBC and CNN in the way that MSNBC and CNN are able to quite literally use the electability argument and have that be the only argument because liberals are conditioned into trusting the media and immediately going along with the electability arguments that the media is presenting, which is literally an Ouroboros. Like it's a, it's, it, it, it oh, this person is electable, that's why we have to vote for him, and then he becomes electable, right? Whereas in the conservative media, they tried to do that shit with Donald Trump in 2016. It didn't fucking work because conservatives don't play that game. The Democratic Party plays the game of, oh, God, we got to care about these institutions. We got to care about the most electable person. There's no other way. A tautology, yes, uh, better than an Ouroboros. That, thank you for, uh, I was thinking about that. A self-fulfilling prophecy as well. That's another uh, way to put it. Um, whereas the Republicans are conditioned into making demands out of their fucking politicians and getting those demands, okay? That's it. You're coping, Biden... You're coping Biden just wasn't popular enough? What do you mean? What? You mean, you, I think you were trying to own me by saying Bernie, you fucking idiot. You're so stupid. You're so dumb, dude. Yeah, what were Biden's bona fides other than his electability, his supposed electability? That was it. He didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He didn't even fucking, he didn't even campaign in half these places. And it doesn't matter, okay? Bernie got owned. He did. He got owned. He got fucking eviscerated, okay? I know that. I don't know why you're saying this shit. So horny to post, they had a stroke. Exactly. He was like, yeah, I'm going to get him. It's always funny when someone is like, someone in a Twitch chat will turn around and be like, yeah, Bernie got owned, you fucking idiot. Like, what do you, do you work for the DNC? Show me the pay stubs. Are you working for the National Democratic Party? Explain to me why you are defending them. Please. Are you working for the DNC? Because if not, like, why are you celebrating a dude who demonstrably does not care about your, your best interest? He does not have your best interest at heart. And, and that much is a certainty from the way that he is, uh, he is, uh, the way that he's governed so far. So... Why are you, like, using that as an own? Are you that fucking hard to just be like, ha-ha, you got owned, Hassan, you fucking idiot, that you're forgetting that, like, you know, it's your material conditions that are sh dog shit as a consequence of, like, this never-ending cycle of rewarding uh, bad candidates like Joe Biden? on the show is Governor Ron DeSantis. He has freshly announced his 2024 presidential campaign. Governor DeSantis, thanks for joining the show. Really appreciate it. Hey, congratulations uh, on the new baby, Ben. I really appreciate that. That's so sweet of you. And uh, we say hello to Casey as well. So why don't we talk about the first 24 hours of this campaign, how you think it's gone so far? Obviously, there were some technical snafus. What with... Uh, yeah, it was just a snafu. It was not that big of a deal. It's This is a nerd off, dude. They're having a mid off, brother. Ben Shapiro likes DeSantis because he's just as mid as Ben Shapiro. He's like, I want to... I want a guy, a lot of people think, uh, foolishly, that they want to vote for a guy that they can have a beer with. I want a guy who's just as fucking unlikable as I am. <laughs> when I vote for someone, I want to make sure that they are unfuckable and unlikable. Twitter spaces, but there were tons of people watching. 700,000 people were trying to log on at the very beginning. These are big numbers. Yeah, and actually, you know, talking no, on Twitter, there are actually very many more who couldn't even get to that part of the queue. And so it caused their, uh, their system to basically melt down and they've never seen anything like it. So I think there was a huge amount of interest. Part of the reason we did do it this way is because we figured with Elon involved uh, that that would reach a wider range of people. 
than would just do a traditional campaign rally. And so there was a lot of buzz generated for those who've been able to watch it. I think like across all the different ones that have it, I think it's over 9 million between the live stream and between David Sachs's one. So that's really, really significant. You know, obviously I made the announcement, I did a little bit of a riff to start, but then a lot of it was just talking about the issues facing the country and being able to answer questions that, that people had. We need to do more of that in this country. Um, you know, we're not uh, here to be entertainers, we're here to be leaders. And ultimately a leader is measured by what kind of results you're ultimately able to deliver. We've delivered great results in Florida because we focused on what matters to the people of the state. And I think we'd bring that same know-how to Washington uh, to focus on what matters to the people of the United States. So Governor DeSantis, obviously Joe Biden has been doing a, a rather poor job. You're running to replace him, but standing in your way is a formidable rival. Former President Trump is the first Republican candidate to declare. Uh, so far, nobody's really laid a glove on him or drawn a strong contrast between themselves and President Trump in, in sort of the national polling. He's up pretty significantly. So how do you see a difference between your candidacy, what you've been trying to do, your record and President Trump? Well, I think it's interesting because he's been attacking me by moving left. So this is a different guy than 2015, 2016. This is so bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, you're going to convince the base of the Republican Party, the primary voters, that Donald Trump is actually a leftist. Hey, you fucking idiot. The reason why they like him is because the reason why they liked them from the start and the reason why they still continue to like them is because, yes, unlike the regular Republican cardboard cutouts like Ron DeSantis, he sometimes will say shit like, uh, the, the fucking uh, DC is corrupt. It's a swamp. Or he'll say things like, I bought all of these politicians when I was a billionaire. Or he'll say things along the lines of like, yeah, uh, you're going to try to fucking cut Medicare and Social Security. If you... If you literally think that those are leftist values and somehow the base of the Republican Party is going to look to that and go, whoa, you're right. We should. We do need fiscal responsibility, actually. Um, and, and we shouldn't be fucking voting for Donald Trump. You're the most delusional person I've ever met. That's why I laughed at, at Ron DeSantis fucking saying that. Ron DeSantis saying, I'm running to restore sanity and also to bring back fiscal responsibility. That's the first fucking thing he said. When, uh, when, the, when the Twitter space finally worked out. It is so incredibly dumb to think that in a post-Trump era in the Republican Party, if you want to win an election, especially a fucking Republican primary, you have to, you have to hold on to like uh, age-old Republican tropes like fucking tort reform or uh, fiscal responsibility. You're an idiot. He attacked me for opposing an amnesty bill in the Congress. He did support this amnesty, this good lot too. Two million illegal aliens he wanted to amnesty. I opposed it because that's what America first principles dictate, that you're opposed to amnesty. He also attacked me for voting. This part is also fucking stupid. When asked, okay, and this is one of the most interesting things about like the American reactionary movement, okay? Americans don't actually fucking hate like the individual immigrants in their lives. This is what's so shocking about it. 75% of Americans agree. 75% of Americans is like similar to the abortion numbers. Agree to amnesty, conditional amnesty or pathways to amnesty for those who are already inside of the country that have been living here for 10 years, 20 years. Okay. It is a mind numbing fact. When you hear about it, you're like, what the fuck? Really? No shot. I don't believe that. Yes, there are plenty of Republicans who literally agree to that. As a matter of fact, a lot of those Republicans agree to that because their fucking parents are undocumented, okay? And they've been living here. And now their children are Republicans. Now they're, and I'm talking like parents who've been here for fucking 20 years, 30 years, and their kids uh, who, who are now voting for the Republican Party 30 years, 40 years, okay? The, the idea that like uh, Donald Trump couldn't swing a bill like that and you could actually criticize him by saying he's woke and he's left is so stupid. Remember, Republicans own patriotism and they own strong border control. So they can get away with making actual fucking uh, policy changes like Ronald Reagan did, who was the most successful 
uh, you know, Republican in contemporary history, like someone that only Trump has been able to uh, surpass in popularity, okay? Uh, Ronald Reagan also did amnesty. You're fucking stupid if you think that, like, Republicans can't actually advocate for that. Just like Republicans can actually successfully advocate to, if they wanted to, which they never will, uh, uh, lower the military budget. Democrats can't do that because if a Democrat pushes for that, they're pussies, they're soy, they're fucking gay, and they want the they-them military to be even further diminished so that, like, uh, uh, our, our enemies overseas and domestic and foreign can come and fucking kill us, okay? But a Republican could actually advocate for that. Why could they advocate for that? Because they already own patriotism. They already own the military. <laughs> Donald Trump, for that reason, was able to literally eviscerate Hillary Clinton by saying he was against the Iraq war and Hillary Clinton wasn't. While simultaneously literally saying some of the most unhinged shit I've ever heard about a military veteran, okay? He said, I like... My, uh, my, I like my war heroes to not be captured about John motherfucking the Maverick McCain, okay? That's it. If you can't comprehend how Donald Trump is able to get away with that, then you've lost the plot completely, okay? Why do you care about John McCain? Are you fucking stupid? You think I like John McCain? First of all, I do like John McCain. That's actually true. John McCain dropped... Four American fighter jets in the Vietnam War. How many fighter jets did you fight? Uh, how many fighter jets did you drop? Zero. John McCain is a based Ho Chi Minh thought following revolutionary secret Marxist. You are not. He's a fucking hero. Okay? Yeah, he was Uncle uh, Uncle Ho Chi Minh's uh, bravest warrior inside of the uh, American military. He almost sunk an aircraft carrier too. Yeah, that was his only problem. He was he was not able to uh, sink that uh, American aircraft carrier. If he had done that, he would have been literally the goat. What a Hassan Abi classic on Monday. Yeah, jo Donald Trump attacks George W. Bush on uh, 9 11 in Iraq. Done. That's all I have. I don't have this. So, anyway, my point is this, he can get away with saying that, okay? Partially, he can get away with saying that because a lot of the sentiment that he's expressing are sentiments that, like, Americans share, a broad majority of Americans share. He can get away with saying whatever the fuck he's saying about John McCain because the Republicans also own patriotism. So no matter what happens, you're not going to be able to fucking out, like, claim that a Republican is fucking woke, okay? That's the one thing they have. It's the marketing that they've done for years and years and years, and it's stuck. That's why when Democrats run Amy McGrath or all these, like, fucking, uh, you know, veterans like Pete Buttigieg or uh, veterans like John Kerry, for example, they will never be actual patriotic military members in the eyes of the broader majority, in the eyes of the fucking American public. Because the American public doesn't care about that. They care about who's saying the things that is closely associated with patriotism. Okay? Claiming patriotism is a crazy statement. It might come across like a crazy statement, but it's the fucking reality. If you've been following politics for as long as I have, you would understand that. But will that work? This is a good question. That he was president and doesn't have that appearance of being an outsider anymore. Now, that's a really good question. The only way that Donald Trump would be able to maintain the presence that he's somehow fighting as an outsider is if the entirety of the Republican Party was somehow up in arms about him running again and was doing everything they can to stop him from running. Okay? On the one hand, he, did, he never lost in the eyes of his base because they stole it from him. He successfully avoided that question. And on the other hand, right now he can play the role of an outsider again by saying, 
Look at the Republican Party. They're putting Ron DeSantis in front of me. They're rhinos. These fucking rhinos are are trying their uh, their very best to put forward an institutionalist uh, Republican who doesn't care about your best interests like I do. So the GOP is like effectively giving Donald Trump an out to literally look like he is the the outsider once again, even though he's quite literally the insider. Elise, I'm not going to listen to this. I don't care. It's not important for the main uh, point of, of uh, conversation here, okay? We're done. Let's get back to Ron DeSantis. ...against an omnibus spending bill that was bloated, full of pork, and that racked up huge amount of debt for this country. Yes, I voted against the omnibus. He signed every omnibus that was put on his desk, and so I think it's odd that he's doubling down on those positions because those were instances in which his actions did not match his campaign rhetoric. Um, And I also think just the difference between 2015 and 16 and now is uh, I, as chief executive of Florida, and he as chief executive of the United States, we both faced COVID-19 and we both responded in the way we did. Uh, He responded by elevating Anthony Fauci and really turning the reins over to Dr. Fauci. And I think to terrible consequences for the United States, Uh, I was the leader in this country in fighting back against Fauci. Uh, We bucked him every step of the way, starting in April of 2020, whether it's the schools, the businesses, the mandates, and our state has never done better as a result. Uh, We're number one for in in migration, uh, number one for for growth, and um, we keep continue to see great things happen. So, but it required me to cut against the grain. It required me to know that every decision I made was going to be met with opposition from the media and from the left. Uh, but you do what's right and you don't let them cow you. And so I think Fauci should have been fired. Um, and I think the fact that uh, Donald Trump gave Anthony Fauci a presidential commendation on Trump's last day in office, that was a gut punch to millions of people around this country who were harmed by Fauci's lockdowns. Now, Governor DeSantis, today the president actually uh, attacked you by suggesting that Andrew Cuomo had done a better job in New York, which is sort of a shocking thing coming from a president who's declared that he is the enemy of the left when it comes to COVID. Andrew Cuomo, of course, did not do a, a better job. He, he's been he's been citing statistics, suggesting using sort of absolute numbers of people who died per state as opposed to looking at population adjusted, which, of course, seems deeply dishonest just on a statistical level. What, what's your take on those attacks? They're very bizarre. I mean, first of all, Florida had less excess mortality than California or New York. Part of that is because states like California had excess mortality derived from the lockdown policies. Uh, which is really, really avoidable uh, mortality. But if he thinks uh, Cuomo handled it better, that's an indication if something like this were to happen again, he would double down and do what he did in March of 2020. That was a difficult situation. We didn't have all the facts and people can kind of understand, you know, if you did things that may not have worked out. But we all have to sit here today in 2023, look back at March of 2020 and say Fauciism was wrong. Fauciism was destructive. Fauciism has set us on this path with the CARES Act and the Fed uh, printing money, creating inflation, and creating some of the economic problems that we have today. So if you could do it again, would he do the same thing? I sure hope not, because those were not the right decisions to make. Uh, And I've said very clearly, you know, if I'm... Sorry, I had to put Fiona in there as well to see how this works out for them. I don't know if putting them in a confine, confined space like this together is a good idea, but we're about to see how this works out. We interrupt this broadcast for a very special report. Fiona went in and immediately went for the fucking chew toy, which I'm sure is going to bother Kaya. Kaya starts barking at Fiona to play. Fiona, on the other hand, being the old bitch that she is, is most likely not going to play with her. She has refused to play with her every single time. Now Kaya is taking the Chewy toy back, which Fiona will probably respond not kindly to. She has been, uh, she has shown a little bit of toy aggression uh, so far. I usually have to yell at Fiona and correct her behavior in times like this. Uh, We are awaiting. Fiona is now going for a separate toy. Deciding maybe I can play with a different toy instead. 
That's a good thing. That's a good compromise, I think. Fiona did not like the secondary toy because the secondary toy does not have a chew toy inside of it. <sighs> Fiona is now looking around saying, what the fuck am I doing here? Why am I stuck in here? I'm not a little baby. Kaya not only has control over the chew toy, but wanted to play with Fiona, which allowed an opening for the chew toy. Uh, and now Fiona's going back to the chew toy itself. Kaya is taking advantage of this opportunity to smell Fiona's uh, booty. But, and is now, yep, she's getting all up in there. Getting all up in there. Get in there. That's how dogs uh, learn about each other. Smelling the tail. Fiona is taking advantage of this. Uh, opportunity to chew on the chew toy. Fiona, of course, is an older dog, which is why she is usually very quick with the destruction of chew toys, such as the one that takes a long, uh, which takes a long ass time for Kaya to go through. Fiona, Fiona, there. Okay, let's see. I opened up a space for Kaya to possibly go back and grab the chew toy. Will Fiona correct this uh, behavior? Fiona! Fiona! Share. Share the toy. Fiona's looking up at me like, what the fuck do you mean? Kaya's going in for the toy now. Fiona! No! Kaya, get the toy. Okay, I am changing the dynamic a little bit. Good girls, both of you. Good job. Sharing is caring. Hey. Girl. Kaya is now chewing on the chew toy instead. Fiona is looking around. I'll give him treats. Hold on. For her good behavior, Fiona gets a second fresh 7-inch bully stick. Premium dog chew. Kaya? No, Kaya. Kaya is now being inquisitive about the bully stick, which is leading to Fiona grabbing the other bully stick. So now there's two bully sticks. Kaya has now, in the most dominant way possible, Taken the other bully stick. She is such a fucking asshole. It blows my fucking mind. Fiona, on the other hand, is a very submissive, wonderful, beautiful dog who doesn't engage in asshole behavior like Kaya. Because Fiona's not a fucking asshole, even though Kaya is. Bully sticks are made from bull penis? Yes, I know. And it smells like fucking shit. But... It also keeps these dogs occupied for literally hours on end. So I don't give a fuck. Super villain pup origin story? Straight up. At least they're being good together. Uh, they are. They, they don't actually have, uh, they don't actually have like legitimate problems with one another. But they do actually, uh, like Kaya barks a lot. And I actually don't know. Um, I actually don't know how to deal with that either. Like, I don't know how to train her not to fucking bark at, at Fiona all day, every day. Having Kaya on a cage is so authoritarian of you. All socialists and communists are the same. You preach about equality and equity until they get into power and put you in a cage, just like you're doing to Kaya. Yes. I am doing that to Kaya. Kaya is such a diva. Treat her like Austin. It's the Tibetan Mastiff instincts. They bark a lot. Yeah, I know. Mongolshevik, Mongolshevik is correct. 
The Bed and Mastiffs are very loud and very vocal. Kaya, please free me. Thank you for the 10 gift of subs. Um, they're very loud. They're very vocal. They never shut the fuck up. They're not as bad as Huskies, but uh, they do bark a lot, like a lot. But fine. I manage. Take a newspaper and whack her on the head when she barks. Some will say that's abuse. I say brown parents upbringing. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Huskies are respectful. Shut the fuck up. No, they're not. Huskies are literally the most communicative dogs. It was fish as hard to train as a puppy. I I don't remember, honestly. I actually don't remember. I thought it was so easy to train because it's been so many fucking years. Like I only I remember I remember how cute he was as a puppy. I just don't remember how like hard it was. I rem but I think I do think that Kaya is harder to train. I mean look at this. Look at this fucking asshole. Look, look. You see this? She's such a fucking asshole. Like, she is literally an asshole, dude. Yes, Kaya currently is trying to get Fiona to play, which was a big mistake because Fiona is now using this as an opportunity to eat the chew toy that Kaya had stolen originally. Now Kaya has stolen the other chew toy that Fiona was playing with. Now the chew toys have swapped once again. Oh. Kaya is so possessive, no sharing. No, 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 no. She's not barking because... She's currently not barking because she's possessive over the chew toy. She does not give a fuck about the chew toy. She does not have any toy aggression. Fiona does. Fiona is an older dog, and she's developed some level of toy aggression. Um, the thing is, Kaya's barking because she wants to play. Kaya's barking because she wants to uh, interact with Fiona... And she wants something back from Fiona. She wants uh, Fiona to play back. Fiona, being an older dog, does not want to play with Kaya at all. Um, this is unfortunate. Fiona does not give Kaya anything, which is ironic because that's what Chatters wanted me to do. Chatters literally were like, why don't you... Uh, <laughs> Chatters literally were like, why don't you respond to your dog when she's barking, you fucking animal. Uh, guess what? You're not supposed to, and Fiona's doing the right thing. I would also want Fiona to maybe even bark more at Kaya and, like, scare her a little bit, but unfortunately, she doesn't do that. She's too, she's too submissive to do that. It's just her... It's not in her personality. Has she met other dogs yet? Yeah, she has met... She's with another dog right now. Don't you think keeping Kaya in, in a game with Fiona might have unforeseen consequences like the top of the hour ad break while reading this message and forgetting the time? Yes, it does have an unforeseen consequence. Uh, I had a really good banger uh, of an ad break segue, and now I gave it up to you. I was going to say I'm training them harder than I train you to avoid the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Um, or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky. NB Chaos and Kaya, please free me. Thank you for the 5 and 10 gifted subs, allowing 15 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's a three-minute ad break now. When they first met, Fiona was actually correcting her really well when she was barking. I remember you were confused at first why Fiona was growling, but that was actually really good. It was teaching Kaya dog manners. Yeah, and now Fiona has decided that... Uh, Ikaya is un untreatable. <laughs> Exclusive. A solitary assistance fund that the Writers Guild and several of its prominent members... Here, I'll show you this, guys. Here's some good news. A solitary assistance fund that the Writers Guild and several of its prominent members have established to help non-members during the Guild's ongoing strike has now grown to over $2.2 million and has already helped more than 400 industry members.
No, no. She'll, she, Fiona still growls at Kaya. She's doing it right now. You can't. You might not be able to hear it over the over the noise gate, but Fiona was just growling at Kaya when Kaya got too close to her face. <coughs> um, Kaya, being the little bitch that she is, is uh, bored of the attention she's not getting from Fiona and doing everything in her power. She will inevitably become a little bit more annoying and more of a nuisance. She's slowly but surely testing the boundaries, trying to see what she can get away with. Look, she's sticking her face into areas around. <laughs> she's so fucking funny. She's so fucking annoying, but I love her so much. It's, it's hard. I am expecting Fiona to literally turn around and like, you know, chomp at her a little bit. She's getting so big. She's already 24 pounds and she's literally about to complete her third month of existence. She's a little bit uh, smaller than uh, a, like a Tibetan Mastiff would be at this age for the record. Um, she is... Uh, a t Tibetan Mastiffs at their their fourth month are supposed to be, I have it right in front of me, female Tibetan Mastiff weights at three months is 25 pounds to 40 pounds. Um, this is her completing her third month, and she's only, she's 24 pounds. So it's because she has chow chow in her. Yeah, 25 to 40 pounds is how, how big she's supposed to be right now if she was like an actual full-blown Tibetan Mastiff. This is her last week of her third month. If you move the bed out, would they have more room to exist slightly next to each other rather than on top of one another? No, that's deliberate. The bed is there to restrict her movement. It's on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah, she's probably going to be around 30 pounds at four months which is certainly uh, much, much lighter than what she's supposed to be. So I guess the worms are responsible for some of the weight loss too. Uh, no. Uh, that could be the case, actually. You're right. Um, at six months, like their growth stagnates a little bit. Female Tibetan Mastiffs go from 30 to 45 pounds at four months to 35 to 60 pounds at, at uh, five months. Sorry, 35 to 60 pounds. And then at six months, they go to 40 to 60 pounds. Probably max at 100 pounds due to the other breeds. Yeah. The DNA test I got was from Embark, Embark Vet. She is 11 weeks old. She's completing her 11th week, or, or she's on her uh, 12th week now. Anything over 70 pounds of a large dog? Yeah, but I wanted a giant dog. I wanted a really big dog. Yeah, Embark Vet is the thing. I do not believe that she will be a giant dog. I hope that she will. I want her to be more than 100 pounds, but I don't think she will. Trade her in for a larger model. Yeah. Well, having to not caring about the search criteria anymore because you love Kaya specifically so much. I mean, that's, that's the truth. What the fuck do you mean? How much was fish? 
Fish was, I think, around 70 to 80 pounds. Look, look. She's barking at Fiona, and Fiona is growling at her while still chewing the fucking chew toy. Kaya is standing on top of Fiona, which Fiona is not liking. There's no way she treat, she takes kindly to that. My dog was a lab mitt, uh, mixed mutt, and she was smaller than Kaya three months. Maybe she was 20 pounds at that age, and she reached 108 pounds as a healthy adult. She will still look bigger with all that fluff. It's true. Ooh. Oh, my God. Kaya is leaning into Fiona, like laying literally towards her belly. And every time she does that, Fiona growls aggressively. When will she reach her max weight? At a year and a half. Around a year and a half. Maybe a little bit before a year and a half. Puppies technically keep growing until they're two years old, but uh, usually, you know, it caps out at around a year and a half, usually. Puppies are all like this, and I have a dog even more patient than Fiona, and he's so reluctant to go aggressive, but he has taught a number of dogs manners and personal space. I've literally seen him pin a dog by her throat until she got the message. She was not socialized, so it was hard for her to read another dog. How is Kaya with Moran and the fam? Kaya is incredible with people, even though she does get a little uh, puppy-like at times and will then turn around and, uh, you know, chew on them or try to. How can you curb her barking as a pup? Adult Tibetans can bark, can shake a room. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send her to training. Has she met black people yet? Uh, yes, she met Trey, but that's it. That's the only black person she's met so far, and very briefly. You guys laugh. No, it's imp that's literally important. No, it's not a joke. No, <laughs> stop laughing at that chatter. Yes, a lot of dogs are literally develop racist-ass tendencies because they never fucking... It's, it's, they, they never actually interact with, like, black people if they're, you know, in a white family. And they literally will become racist. Like, not ra but they'll, they'll bargain black people. Damn, this guy's good.